Hello and welcome to the Event Industry News podcast. Come to you via eventindustrynews.co.uk and of course via iTunes as well. Welcome wherever you are tuning in from in the wide world of events. And joining the podcast today, uh, we welcome Jim Quintrell or Quintrell. Jim, correct me on that. No, Quintrell will work. Thank you, James. Perfect. And thanks for joining the show today. Um, we're going to be talking today and finding out a little bit more about the meetings benchmark. Um, before we find out a little bit more about that particular um, uh, initiative, uh, if, we, if we can call it at this stage, before we find out more, Jim, tell us a bit about your own background in the industry and uh, what it is you do. Happy to. Thanks, James. I've, I've been in the meetings events industry for, well, over 20 years, actually. So always agency side. Um, hotel scene when they were in London, to give an idea how long ago that was. Grassroots, BSI, Cactus Travel and Events. Three years ago, self and my business partner, Paul Hussey, founded a consultancy called The Conference Doctor. So we, we work with organisations on their um, commercial strategies and, and procurement focus particularly. One of the things that, that we wanted to do when we started the, the, the business was try and provide a independent and impartial source for uh, benchmarking meeting rates. And, and that's where we've now got to with the, the meetings benchmark. Okay, so, so when was it? Um, when was the idea conceived? How long has it sort of taken to, to come to fruition? The, the idea was was probably conceived about five years ago, James, when we were both still within um, agency. Because one of the, the big challenges we had was finding a, a, an independent source for benchmarking rates. So customers would be wanting to either benchmark their SMMP programs. Or, or even sometimes just, just their individual uh, events. And we, of course, have the data that we have within the agency. But unlike um, transient uh, bedroom data, there was nowhere to go outside of the, the, the agency to, to really get a broad industry view. So it, it, was, it was in our mind as we started the, the, the business three years ago, but we, we really gathered pace um, 12 months ago in terms of taking it beyond an idea and um, starting to develop the, the tool and importantly open up the uh, data channels. And I, I suppose if we get into to the nitty gritty of it, if we're going to bring it right back to layman's terms, and what we've all, always been appreciating is that there are varying levels of experience in the, in the event industry, regardless of what sector you're in. So there'll be people tuning into this that are fairly new to the industry that might not understand some of these terms. In layman's sort of, you know, terminology, what would the service offer a meeting and event organiser? Or, you know, what benefits would it bring to somebody on a simplistic level? I, I think, yeah, there's, 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 probably, there's probably three levels of, of uh, people who benefit from this. So if, if we look at um, a, a, an agent, so within a, a meeting management or an event management company, the ability now for them to be able to go online and look at pricing for, uh, let's say, uh, Nottingham, uh, as an example, mm -hmm. to be able to look both backwards and, and importantly, forwards in terms of, of pricing that you might expect. So if you're planning to, if you're helping your client budget, for example, then to be able to go and say, okay, well, if you're looking to run a meeting in, in Nottingham mm -hmm. in September, then you're going to be looking at uh, delegate rates in the region of. And... And that information there is is both real time and also robust, James. There's there's almost 150,000 meetings within the tool already. Right. So that when people look at pricing, it it isn't a small sample by by any means. Um, agencies equally have the ability to then um, enhance both their customer MI and their their internal business intelligence as well. For uh, an event planner. I guess they've got the same benefits in terms of, of, of budgeting in being able to look at various locations and equally styles of venue to see how the, the rates will differ there. So I, I think for, for planners there's a real chance to do some, some proper budgeting and real planning. And then the ability to answer that question that everybody says is, is have I got a good rate or not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, how much? Uh, how many venue specifics are included? Um, uh, forgive me if that's a daft question. I've missed something, but 
um, when it comes to analysing value for money and what is good value for money as a cost per head, for example, at a meeting or, or an event, um, I suppose that has to be put up against the quality of the venue as well. So, you know, it might be a higher price, but the venue may offer loads of, of tech benefits or just the quality of the decor. How would people identify what value for money is from a venue to venue basis? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been very careful to try and uh, enable people to compare apples with apples. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you go into the tool, you can you can filter your results by um, both venue type and um, venue rating, right. for example. So you can be sure that you're you're looking at a like for like comparison rather than just a general price for any any venue in a given location. How big is the marketplace for, for the service? Because, um, again, just to play devil's advocate for a second, surely um, experienced agencies and people who are experienced within this particular sector of the events industry, so meetings and, and conferences and events, um, they will know the venues, they will have worked in different parts of the country geographically, they will be familiar with rates that have been built up in their own data over a number of years. So why can they not just use their own information and their own experience to benchmark what, what they think maybe value for money is or, or what price they should be paying? It, there's no doubt, James, that some are in a position to be able to do that with the, with the data that they have. But what the meetings benchmark gives is, is a much broader view than, than any individual organisation can, can have. You know, they, they will see what they've historically done, be that a, a customer directly or be that a, an agency on behalf of, of a client. Mm -hmm. But they've now got the ability to, to see beyond that and, uh, and real broad pricing from the industry as, as, a, as a whole. I think that's the major difference. Uh, and and is, there, is there a, a benefit as well of, of using the service to actually help identify venues that were not just venues, but opportunities that were hidden before that perhaps they weren't aware of. So taking events, again, geographically to new places or identifying new venues within a, a, an area that they've used before but they haven't realised actually would be applicable to what they're doing. I think certainly for the, for the location perspective, James, and what, what I should be clear about is um, we anonymise all of the, the data and only publish aggregated results. So okay. um, to ensure confidentiality, we don't take the venue name, customer name, nor the agency name, even at the, the, the back end of the data feed. Mm -hmm. So what it, it, what it means is that you can go into a location and, yeah, absolutely, you can think, well, if I took my event to this location, am I going to get a, a, a different pricing structure here than I, I have when I've been running it in London for the last five years, you will certainly see that. Uh, is, there a, is there any scope at all for organisers to utilise the tool alongside, uh, 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 and, and also combine that with um, feedback that they've actually had from past delegates or attendees at meetings? Is there any way of, of actually offering new opportunities, perhaps new pricing structures and things to existing delegates to say, look, here are some of the options we're exploring, what do you think? No, there isn't at this this point, James. And I, I'm aware of a, a couple of organisations who are looking at that sort of um, review uh, ability for for customers online. Mm -hmm. it, it's not something we're looking at at this point in time. It, it's not to say we wouldn't talk to those organisations. And and w when it's come to actually developing the the tool itself, you know, the, the actual um, the, the software and the framework of this. Um, how many people have been responsible? Have it, has any of it been outsourced? And who have you worked with to actually get the product to the point where it is now? Yeah, we were very lucky to find a, a really good developer, actually. So we, we, we've outsourced all of the, the technical build to, to our developer. Um, none, of, none, of, none of us involved are technical. What we've done is we've worked with the developer in terms of what we believe needs to be captured. And, and how it needs to be presented, but no, the actual the actual build was completely outsourced. Uh, and when it comes, there's obviously a, uh, I guess there's a price involved for people to access this because there's 
you know, a, a significant benefit by the sounds of things. How does the pricing structure work? So if an organiser wants to tap into it, what's going to be expected of them on a short and a long-term basis? So it's, a, it's a, a fairly standard model, I guess, in terms of an annual subscription. Um, what we have done is we've heavily incentivized those who provide data because we know this, this tool produces real benefits when you have the kind of scale of meeting that we have in now, and we would want to only build on the numbers that we have in there already. So there's a, it's a very heavy incentive for those who are providing data. If you are not able to provide data, then the subscription model is based on um, the number of users that you wish to have in terms of licenses and the features that you, you wish to access. And when you say providing data, again, just, just for, for clarification here, you would mean a, 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 an organiser or an agency that wants to access this, uh, the, 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 um, the meetings benchmark service, they could actually bring their existing data or anything that they feel would be of benefit to the community and offer that up as, as, a, as an offset to the subscription cost. That, well, that's exactly right, James. Yeah, we're working with, at the moment, we're working with agents. So we are going through um, the process of, of onboarding with agents who are providing data. And we, we try to make it as easy as possible because we know this, is, this has failed previously when it's become difficult to do. So yes. um, we have API feeds in place, which once that's set up with the agency, um, data is automatically fed every, every day. So... Every every new booking that's confirmed in that day is then pushed through to the to the tool. Um, for those who maybe don't have the uh, the API set up, mm -hmm. then a, a very simple CSV upload facility is available for them to just run the uh, report into Excel and, and upload it. So yes, we we're, we're trying uh, we're working very hard at the moment with agencies. The next conversations to be had will be with venues. Okay, and um, as you point out, you don't have to offer data, um, so, so this could be utilised by a brand new company in the industry as much as it could be for an existing company who's wanting to just provide a bigger picture. Yes, it could. Excellent. Um, single users. Um, is, is there a minimal input for, for single, uh, are we just talking about agencies here, is there, is there any sort of um, leverage that an individual freelancer who's working in the industry who gets contracted or brought in to help organise meetings from other agencies, is there any way that they can access it on a, a, a bit more of a, an easier level financially? Um, it, it, it's a good question, James. There's, there's, uh, I guess... If they're, if they're brought in by an agency who is already using Meetings Benchmark, then there's no issue for them to, to access it. Um, if they are uh, an individual freelancer who will move from project to project, then that's um, an individual subscription, James, that, that they would need to take out with the Meetings Benchmark. That means then if it's portable, they can take it anywhere with them. Sure. And um, looking at, at case studies, you said this is this is already up and running, and we're at a stage now where this is a live service; people can access this. Um, have you been able to to draw on any positive feedback thus far, and what sort of case studies have we got to reference? No, we've still got case studies. We're, we're only a couple of months down the down the line, James. And um, what we need to do is is get the the, the users together. So we're working through with with feedback. The, 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 the anecdotal feedback that we've had is that it, it's very, very simple to use mm -hmm. and very, very easy to get the information that they need right away. Um, what we've got is, is people looking at, at different ways of, of utilising it. So at, at the moment we haven't got a um, structured piece of, of feedback from any of the users Sure. We're, um, we're working towards business travel show where we've been chosen as part of the launch pad feature. So we will um, do a, uh, effectively a hard launch um, there uh, and then we'll need to convene with the, the early adopters to, to learn better. I, I'm just looking at the moment at, um, at, at the, the page on the website simply called features that, that, that can do, in a nutshell some of the main features of, of what's on offer here. Um, there's two things I'm looking at. Um, 
the white paper element, discover what benchmarking best practice looks like. Um, we'll come to that in a second, but um, another one that I'm curious in is compare and contrast results by end client industry. And as no doubt you will have experienced, you will have delivered meetings and events and conferences for clients who work in a number of different industries. And so I think being able to contrast and compare from sector to sector is, is quite important as well as equally as venue to venue. It, it is, and that's one of one of the, the filters, James, that's available within the tool. So although we don't we don't take client name, we, we do ask for um, client sector where that's recorded. So then it does give you the ability then to to compare and contrast results amongst the, the, the various client sectors. And it, and is that simply for um, uh, just just for, to, to satisfy people's curiosity, or is there an element of that where somebody could see, or oh, hold on, the average price per head that this particular industry is charging is X, and yet in my industry or this particular this particular sector, we're only charging Y. Is there an argument where people are looking to bring their prices up, bring one side down, or or, or what would be the the objective of, of seeing and being able to compare sector by sector in different industries? I think the, the reality is that, that, that it's, it's not so much what sectors charge, it's more what, what sectors are prepared to pay. And we, we know that there's, there's, there's different budgets within different customer sectors. Mm -hmm. So for, particularly for, for agencies, I think you're often looking at various sectors and saying, well, we don't work particularly in, in that sector. And I, and, I, and I wonder if we should or we'd like to, but then you, you, you need to understand that may come with some um, budget differences with, within yeah. that, that sector. You know, government would be a great example versus um, maybe financial services. There, there will be a difference in what the, the sectors are looking to, to pay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other feature that I, I highlighted that's on, on this, this features page um, of the website is, is white papers. Um, discover what benchmarking best practice looks like. I mean, what, what does it look like, and how deep could you go into these, these particular papers? Well, but that's that's a survey that that we ran. So we've we've had an advisory board supporting us for the last twelve months, mm -hmm. um, and what we also did was we went out to a large number of um, event travel managers and buyers to ask them, are, are you benchmarking now? And if you're not, are you looking to? What are you looking to benchmark? Uh, and how would you like to benchmark? So that particular white paper is now the results of, of that survey. And James, I'm, I'm happy to you know, share that with your, uh, your readers as a, yes. as a white paper, as a, as a survey result. But it, it, for us, was very was very interesting. It was also very much part of the uh, the research phase for us. And presumably, did the, the whole point of having that detail actually on the website is that people can, should they want to go and hunt it down themselves, they can do. Yes, yeah, exactly. But it also means that that where we have um, market intelligence, the, the the white papers, we, we now have a a real weight of of data that starts to answer some of those questions, such as did did Brexit have an impact on meeting rates? Does it look like it will continue to have an impact on meeting rates? You know, which locations are performing well? Which locations are uh, coming under pressure from a, a rate uh, from a price point? That kind of information that we'll we'll also put into the white paper area, so that the people have uh, have access to that as I guess an additional benefit to being a subscriber. And, and we'll obviously put um, for when this goes out, there'll be links uh, for anybody watching this. Uh, on Event Industry News or by the YouTube channel, um, there'll be links so that they can go through to the website. But if people do want to find out, maybe explore this um, in a bit more detail initially, Jim, um, tell us what the first stage would be for somebody getting in touch with you. Is there a trial option or is there a demo option that people can actually be a, get a bit interactive with and see how the system works? Yes, we've, we've, got, a, we've got a demo built, James, that, 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 that I'm more than happy to take absolutely anybody, a, anybody through. And it's um, something that uh, I, I do by way of, of webinar, so we'll either do that as a, as a group or as a, as a one to one. Um, and the, the, it's, I think it's, it's very easy if I take through the, the demo. So at the moment, the demo is not um, enabled as a self serve. 
But mm -hmm. anybody who, who wants to find out more, if they go to uh, meetingsbenchmark.com and, and simply send an email through to the inquiries address there, then I'll pick that up and happy to schedule a demo with anybody and everybody. I, I was going to ask you before we wrap up to actually uh, to give us the, the website and give us the details of where people need to go to, but you, you've snuck that one in there already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, as I said, we're going to put links up anyway um, via our feeds um, so that people can click click through via Event Industry News or, or via the YouTube link and obviously we've mentioned it so if you're listening to the podcast um, via iTunes um, you can uh, you can head over there. We will wrap up today's episode though um, and thank uh, Jim Quintrell from the Meetings Benchmark. Jim, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you James, much appreciated. Good luck with the ongoing efforts of it um, and I think uh, further down the line I think we, we'd very much be curious to get you back on the show at some point and have a look when we've got some case studies, when we've got more evidence and more data to come in. It'd be great to look six, 12 months down the line and, and see how this is progressing. Uh, absolutely, James, we'll be happy to. And we're also looking at Event Tech Live as well. So we're, we're, we very much hope that we will be appearing there also. Fantastic. So uh, anybody listening to this, watching this, who's familiar with Event Tech Live, there's potentially an opportunity to come and see uh, Jim and his team from the Meetings Benchmark later on this year. But for now, we'll wrap up this particular episode of the Event Industry News podcast. Thank you once again to Jim Control. My, my name is James Dixon, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.